Why do you have two seats? Yeah, well, yeah I can save the galaxy, I just can't sit down properly. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have them go down the line, introduce themselves, and just take care of one frequently asked question now, and so have you all tell us how you got into voice at home. I have to start? Yeah. <laughs> what was the question? I have to say how I got into voice acting? Yeah, introduce yourself. Oh, hi. I'm Courtney Taylor. I play Jack. Woo! Uh, hello, dead people! <laughs> um, uh, I got into voice acting, I managed a boxing gym, and I tore up my throat pretty badly from screaming at people, so it was good <laughs> practice for Jack. Um, and I went to a, I applied for a master's program in acting, and the guy was like, your voice sucks, and I won't, <laughs> I won't take you, unless you go to a doctor and get that fixed, and uh, you'll never play Juliet. Um, and I was like, I'm actually pretty cool with that. Uh, and then I, um, I went to the class and I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's awesome. And then I booked my first audition, which was for a hospital. So I did a caring and kind voice. And um, that doesn't get used very much anymore, but... Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Mark Muir. I play uh, Blasto. <laughs> Georgia and a bunch of Volus and uh, various aliens and Mercs and oh, Commander Shepard, I guess. <laughs> There's some kind of convention or something going on because I dress like this all the time. And it's just kind of, it's kind of Hello, yeah, good to see you. And uh, so, as for how I got into voice acting, you know, story old as time. I used to manage a boxing gym and I drew up my voice. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, the old-fashioned way, I went to uh, an audition back in the day when Bioware was still holding general auditions and I uh, basically impressed them enough uh, with my one audition that they just kept rehiring me and hiring me and hiring me and eventually gave me a nice big part, so that's how you do it. Hi, I'm Kimberly Brooks. I'm Williams, um, and it's an awesome role. I got into voiceover, yeah, age-old story, um, went to voiceover classes, um, and studied acting, and um, I actually booked my very first audition, which was a really good omen, and, um, this, and then I had another audition for these people I'd taken a voiceover class uh, with Calvinson and Calvinson. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I just heard Camel Toe and Camel Toe. Camel Toe, Camel Toe. <laughs> camel Toe. Very big operation. <laughs> and um, I booked my second job and I was like, maybe I should do this. This is pretty cool. And um, I've been doing it for years and it's been amazing because I get to be here doing this. So, thank you. <laughs> My name is Michael Hogan. All right! Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a flip phone carry, flip phone carrying Luddite. I'm not a gamer, per se. I have to research the games before I do them. Uh, but I don't play them afterwards. Um, uh, but I have, I've done about four or five uh, video games. Uh, the CBC, I'm from Canada, and the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, we used to do an awful lot of radio drama, uh, audio books, poetry readings uh, at the studios in Toronto and in Vancouver. Uh, so I have been uh, using my voice uh, since 1969, I guess, when I left National Theatre School. Um, so, um, but the, unfortunately with the grant, uh, with the uh, government cutbacks, those wonderful, wonderful studios that used to have the Foley's and the sound guy eating your meal for you as you're doing the radio drama and walking for you as you're speaking. Unfortunately, they're empty, absolutely empty with the government cutbacks. Um, so, but coming to Mass Effect, um, they asked me to come in and do this role uh, because they had seen Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> In the ship. It's in the fracking ship. Right. Uh, uh, so, 
That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, God's it. <laughs> um, I'm Christian Halper. Um, and, I, and I play Edie, um, and I got into voice acting um, because of Battlestar Galactica. I was, um, it was, and Mass Effect wasn't my first game. I've been lucky enough to do a, a ton of games now, um, and some uh, cartoons and animated features and things, and it's, it's a, a lot of fun. Um, but I definitely have Battlestar to thank for getting into the voiceover um, area of, of acting because my first game a lot of the, some of the creators of the show of the game were Battlestar fans and they thought it was cool to have number six just like you know that salt high so um, I'm very thankful for that <laughs> awesome. uh, what, are my, what are my question mics where are you at okay Alright, so if you have a question, since there are a ton of you, uh, I'm going to have you come to the center of line up. Don't run, that's done, you'll fall. How many people in this room? A lot. A like, lot I was told there were like 1,100 seats in this room or something like that. Really? Well, thanks for showing up, folks. You guys look awesome. I'm looking around and there's some thick ass cosplay. You guys are great. We got some Asari down here. We got a Volus and Slayer. We got a Jack! Yeah, we got Uh, I was, uh, the reason I dressed like this, I was at the N7 uh, uh, costume group photo shoot. There were quite a number of Jacks, including a Rule 63 male Jack. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, all Jacks must report to the signing hall at 5 p.m. <laughs> check them out. <laughs> when you're waiting in line to ask a question, please kneel if you are able. If you're not, then stand up. Just get on black people, oh. you know. I was like, what's happening? It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought like, the person asking the question had to like, kneel as well. Please avert your eyes. Please speak now. <laughs> Alright, close yours. Uh, yes, I was uh, wondering if there was a certain game that got y'all into maybe wanting to do it. I know like, y'all wouldn't do it when y'all were younger or nothing, but like, was there a certain game that kind of propelled y'all to want to do voice acting? Uh, Mark? Uh, well, uh, actually, yeah, there is a specific game that, you know, like, I, I played games growing up, uh, and uh, I'm a big nerd and whatnot, but uh, there was a specific game that really made me want to work for Bioware, and that was MDK3, uh, or sorry, MDK2, which was uh, a game that Bioware did back in the 90s, and a bunch of friends of mine got to be the voices on it. Uh, and uh, so I was insanely jealous, and so like, I was just, like, waiting, looking any time that I got a chance to audition for Bioware. And uh, so the first thing I got to audition for them for was, I believe, Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. Uh, which have recently been re-released as uh, in enhanced editions, and so I got to sort of revisit some of my very earliest voice work uh, ever. And, uh, and they've added like new characters and adventures and things like that. So nice to go back to the Forgotten Run. So yeah, uh, yeah, DK2. For me, it was, um, I had a friend that was uh, that worked at Activision, and this was a long time ago. And I was doing cartoon voices, and he knew I did voices, and he said, you should come do some voices on this game. There was no union affiliation. They were basically using, you know, game testers and whatnot, and the game was called Dark Rain. I don't know if anybody remembers that game. It's really old. But I did the computer voice throughout the whole thing, and then I was out somewhere, and somebody recognized my voice from that computer game, and Wow, this is super cool. So that that ended up being something for me that, that made me really want to do this. I um, got to do, I'm a huge animal cat fanatic, and um, I got to do Black Cat yeah. in Instagram <laughs> Web of Shadows, so that was, that was pretty fun for me, but a quick funny story. Um, I had done a couple of video games, and they're all fairly adult content, right? You know, they're for kids a lot. Um, but I got asked to do, um, before the video game, uh, Black Cat, I got asked to do Black Cat, and I thought it was for the video game. And I go in there, and I'm reading, and I'm kind of making a really purry, you know, and um, I found out after I had done my first session, uh, my first, it turned out to be a children's morning cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> 
And um, so when I went back to do the next episode, <laughs> I said to the guys, the, the you know the sound guys, I was like, um, I think I made her a little too sexy, and they were laughing. They were like, yeah, we was, we was you know on the verge, but they didn't say anything. And then when the when the cartoon came out, one of the reviews said. And Trisha Helfer makes a lot of ten-year-old boys reach puberty. And now I know to pay more attention to what exactly the, the, the outlet is going to be. Oh. Hi. Uh, really exciting to be this close to all of you. Um, a lot of my favorite characters are up here. I'm looking at you, Jack. I'm looking um, at you, baby. Um, I'm very lucky. Um, my question, however, is actually for Trisha. Um, I was just wondering. <laughs> 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 I'm 